All right, what a clinical performance from the Germans. As we have come to expect, uh, Eric, if there's one thing the, Ger the German team is known for is its very professional clinical approach. Uh, and what a game for them. Thomas Müller getting the first hat-trick of the FIFA World Cup. It was a beautiful game. Huh? It, it was a delight to watch. I think what Paulo Bento told his men in the dressing room was like, guys, go out there, fight. We have a problem. We're playing the Germans. <laughs> Second problem, Ronaldo doesn't want to prove nothing to anybody. Not even to the world. Yeah. So go out there and die out fighting. And you know what? Pepe took it completely wrong. Yeah. He went down <laughs> fighting. That was uncalled for. That was extremely bizarre. Exactly. I mean, you know you're playing one of the best sides in the world. It's the FIFA. I mean, it's the World Cup finals for heaven's sake. You can't be doing this even if it is just in jest. You know, he obviously didn't mean to be aggressive. Muller was already down on the pitch. But it was just you know, a blacking out of the brain, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, it was a national disgrace, to be really honest. You're mm. going out there in the world stage. You're representing your country. You're, you're like brand ambassadors of football for your country. You don't do this out there, do you? Mm. Mm. And you know, one thing that I noticed, all these red cards are, are the players who, whose name starts with P. <laughs> you see Pereira, you see... Uh, Pepe now. Pepe now. And you see the other uh, Honduras player, uh, Palacio. Mm. I mean, it was a disgrace. All these guys are going out What's there. What's worse is that Pepe is such an experienced player for the Portuguese side. We'll talk to, about Pepe in just a bit. But a word about Thomas Müller. Just how brilliant was he in this match? I mean, he was fantastic. He did everything right what the coach wanted him to do. Mm. And, he, and he nailed it every time he had to nail it. I mean, it was a perfect delight for a coach to have a player like that. Absolutely. Pure quality. It was bliss. Yes, and Eric had earlier told us that he doesn't like the fact that Ronaldo says he has nothing more to prove. Uh, perhaps not the best attitude to have. Uh, and clearly, Eric is not very happy now after that result as well. But Ashley, uh, extremely poor behavior and performance by the Portuguese side on the pitch. Pepe, you know, indulging in such theatrics when he really should be concentrating on getting Portugal uh, back on parity. 10-man Portugal was never going to be a match for Germany, even though, I mean, even as 11 men weren't. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, chalk and cheese, really. You got the Germans that are in fine form and, and real fluid, and then you had the Portuguese that, that just absolutely pressed the self-destruct button. Obviously, we all see what Pepe did. It's uh, inexcusable on the world stage, and I'm sure he's feeling terrible today. He's not only let himself down, his teammates, and, and probably his country down with that performance. And then you have the injury to Contra, which is... Another big blow for them and, and obviously Ronaldo, you know, was he performing, was he not performing, he, he was in and out of the game, he showed little bits and flits and, and starts but, you know, it wasn't a convincing performance from him so, you know, I'm not sure whether they approached the game with the wrong attitude. If you look at the group, you know, I think they went out there to try and win it against the Germans but looking back in hindsight, a point might have been good for them knowing that the other two games, Germany and, um, sorry, Ghana and the USA is something else they could have got out of. So maybe, maybe the wrong tactics and, and took the game to the Germans and got completely beaten hands down, really. Yes, let's go across to Berlin now. Anurava Chaudhary, noted sports journalist, joining us from there. Anurava, first of all, of course, tell us uh, just how the victory and the performance was received in Germany. Very enthusiastic fans here in India as well. And uh, what you make of Germany's chances now after such a spectacular start. Good evening back home in India. Um, Germany today still is uh, reeling in this in this victory and everyone is very, very happy. A lot of people were skeptical about Germany before going into the World Cup because the preparations were not good. Uh, the camp in, in, um, before the World Cup wasn't good. Then the injury to Royce uh, in the last friendly match against Armenia. So nobody knew really what we were going into. And, and the other thing was discussion about the real number nine, the false number nine. It was not very, very clear who would really play in that position. And you know everyone thought that maybe Götze might be playing in there. Would Klose get his chance to score his 15th or 16th goal? And then it was Thomas Müller. And uh, you know, and, and Thomas Müller is one guy when it comes to those matches, he really picks up and, and takes it forward. Uh, against the opponent and um, you know and uh, it's a tradition now that Germany scored four goals in their opening match so they kept it everyone is happy and uh, the expectations are high they were high anyway because uh, there's a campaign running Germany should win its fourth star uh, but um, you know a lot of questions remain and, 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 and the interesting one is that a lot of people are saying guys it was just the first match let's not get carried away we still have a lot of matches to play to really win this World Cup Absolutely, but the group stage is more or less set for Germany. This was going to be their toughest match uh, uh, and they've uh, managed such a brilliant victory. Uh, let's introduce our Twitter poll of the day as well. 
uh, we're asking our viewers today on Twitter just who has been the most influential or most impressive player for them so far. The choices are Neymar, Messi, Ronaldo. Yes, we've put Ronaldo because he was amongst these top three stars that everyone was waiting to watch in this World Cup. Yes, not a very good match for him, but tweet with hashtag Carnival2014 and hashtag Open Happiness and we'll tell you live results here on our show in our one hour special today. Let's also go across uh, to Borea Majumdar. Uh, Borea, uh, Thomas Muller won the Golden Boot last time with five goals. This time he's already pumped in three. Absolutely, and he was brilliant. I mean, not only in terms of his goal scoring ability, but also in terms of his uh, play acting. The way he sort of, you know, that Pepe thing, he orchestrated it quite beautifully, didn't he? I mean, Pepe was, was ridiculous and stupid in what he did, but Thomas Müller got it. Got it for Germany quite wonderfully. And, 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 you know, you can sense that last goal, for example, Thomas Müller was there, right there in the right spot. Perhaps like his namesake, Gerd Müller, in the 1970s. And this man is brilliant. You know, his 50th match yesterday for Germany, he was absolutely spectacular. 4-0 was an annihilation, as Arunava said. Germany is all celebrations today. So, top match for Germany, but as he said, it was the first game. There's no question Germany will go through from this group. Question is, how far can they go? But with this kind of quality and with Schweinsteiger coming back, maybe in the not-too-distant future, this is one team that has the potential to go really all the way. Yes, we'll talk a little bit more about Portugal as well. Again, many are saying that they still have two winnable matches in the group, so they should just regroup and concentrate on the job at hand. But let's take a look at just how the Twitter world reacted last night when this match was on. You can see that it was a buzz throughout the world, especially in North and, uh, Central and uh, South America, most of Europe, India, Africa, Southeast Asia. And when those little dots come, that's when the goals were scored and the entire Twitter world goes a buzz. A very, very highly tweeted match this Germany versus Portugal. Let's also go across uh, to my colleague Saba, who was actually at the German embassy when this match was being played out and she spoke to some of the enthusiastic and ecstatic uh, German fans after the victory. This is it. Well, the adrenaline rush right here at the German embassy is what the watch as Germany scores goals against Portugal. Ambassador and myself, we were wrong because we were guessing a 2-1 for Germany. Instead, it's been a 4-0, and I think it's been a magic game, a magic night for Germany. I have fingers crossed, and I think, watch out for Germany. Watch out for whatsupgermany.de on our football magazine. There you find all the relevant info, also on Indian football. Well, there we had Nicholas also joining me here as a group of people here, all German cheer. How would you cheer? How are you cheering while Germany was playing? Show us the clap and dance. Whatever. <laughs> Like, was it like an easy game to watch or you think that it was a tough game? It was a team, pure team power of Germany, that's it. Okay, and despite all the talks about players being injured and you know stuff like that, Germany has scored four goals, how is that now? A little bit surprising, <laughs> a little bit, but now happy about it. Do you think Germany is making it to the World Cup, to the, to the final? Yes. Now yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> now yes. I didn't think before, but now I think we, we could like it. Okay, and how would you celebrate now that Germany's won the match against Portugal? We celebrate, it's very easy, we say yeah! As you saw, the Germans right here at the embassy were definitely very positive about the match, and I'm now looking forward to the finals, and I hope that Germany will make it to the finals too. With camera person, Makar and Madame Sabakazi for headlines today. The question we're asking our uh, viewers on Twitter today, just who has been the most impressive player so far in the World Cup? Uh, the uh, the, uh, the cho choices we're giving you is uh, Neymar, Messi, Ronaldo. And these are the live results coming right now. Tweet with hashtag Carnival2014 and hashtag Open Happiness. Neymar winning uh, by quite a margin by 53%. 27 for Messi. 20 still going for Ronaldo. Of course, we kept him there because after all, these were the three top stars the world was waiting to watch in the FIFA World Cup. Uh, let me go across to Eric Benny. Eric, uh, Ronaldo, he was clearly frustrated yesterday. I mean, this, this guy has so much expectations on him. You talked about not having the right attitude, uh, but it, it was frustrating for him. Do you see him bouncing back 
after last night's performance? What I saw is frustrating and I could add to it, there was a one man wall and he, and he hit the wall. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. The uh, next one was pretty good though. The next the one, other was one was pretty good. good. So I think he'll come back mm. <laughs> considering he took the next free kick which was, which was in the frame. Mm. We all want Ronaldo to come back. Mm. It'll be interesting to see him come back. Right. Ashley, what would you tell Ronaldo right now if uh, you know you could get uh, his ear after such a, such a crushing defeat really in the World Cup? You've just got to you know, reiterate that the, the whole country are relying on him really. You know, his teammates are looking to him to, to be the extra spark. You know, he's got to forget. You know, it, to me, he looked like he was walking around there yesterday thinking that he was better than that team. That was the kind of impression I got off him that, you know, what am I doing playing with these? These aren't up to my level. We've got no chance of winning. You know, he came alive when he got the ball and he looked, he, he looked a bit active, but I just felt a little bit of... Um, you know, arrogance was, was creeping into his body language, but you know, he needs to be he needs to be told by the manager that everybody needs him. He needs to bounce back, and he, he, you know, their country's hopes rest on his shoulders. That's just how it is for Portugal. Hmm. Interesting, Eric. You know, everybody's eyeing on Ronaldo to be the next biggest Portuguese star. Hmm. I think differently. I don't think he can ever beat Eusebio because Eusebio carried the whole country. He was a player who could win games for you, hmm. and Ronaldo. With the way he's performed and the way he's but been he's arrogant But he clearly has it. the talent. You're, you're saying that the uh, mindset is the issue with him. Um, oh, it's, it's the biggest issue. He doesn't mm. want to give in. He's mm. looking after himself. And like I mentioned in the earlier show, it takes a, it takes a man to play for his club and a gentleman to play for his country. Mm. This is his time. He should have done it.